Hi everyone, it's Kuni Hiro. Thank you for coming back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make buta no shogayaki, Japanese ginger pork. It's a dish that is commonly enjoyed in everyday life here in Japan. So let me show you how to make it. Alright, here are the ingredients for today's ginger pork. By the way, today's recipe is for two people. So here I have 300 grams of pre-sliced pork loin. The thickness of each slice is about 3 millimeters. You can find this type of thinly sliced pork loin at any Asian grocery store. This is a little thicker than ones for shabu shabu, so please don't get confused. And if you don't have an Asian grocery store near you, you can ask your local butcher to slice the pork loin into 3 millimeter thick. Or you can do it yourself. And I'm using pork loin today, but thinly sliced pork belly and the pork shoulder are also fine. But please don't use bacon, because the final product will be way too salty with bacon, and it doesn't taste good. And today I'm making ginger pork with onion, so I have half an onion. And I will serve shredded cabbage on the side, so here's half a cabbage. And here's some salt. I'll use a tiny bit of it when I cook the onion. And here is some potato starch. I'm going to use it for coating the pork. And these are the ingredients for the sauce. So I have 3 tablespoons of soy sauce, 3 tablespoons of sake, 3 tablespoons of mirin, 2 teaspoons of sugar, and 1 big piece of fresh ginger. I'm going to grate this ginger and add 1 and half tablespoons of it to the sauce. Alright, let's start with making the sauce. First, please grate the ginger. Ginger is one of today's main ingredients, so we are preparing a generous amount of it. If you use too little ginger for this dish, your pork and onion won't get enough ginger flavor, which will be disappointing. So please go ahead and grate a good amount of ginger. And once you have finished grating the ginger, take one and a half tablespoons of the grated ginger and add it to a bowl. Then add 3 tablespoons of soy sauce. It will add saltiness and a nice soy sauce aroma. Then add 3 tablespoons of sake. Sake will give richness and depth to the dish while reducing the strong meat smell. Then add 3 tablespoons of mirin. Mirin will add a distinctive, smooth and gentle sweetness. Also, it will give ingredients a beautiful glaze, making your final product look more appetizing. Then add 2 teaspoons of sugar. Sugar will add more straightforward sweetness. So by combining sugar and mirin, you can create depth to the overall sweetness. And please give it a mix until all the sugar dissolves. By the way, it's very important to prepare the sauce ahead of time. If you add the condiments to the frying pan one by one and take too long, the pork can end up overcooked and become tough which you want to avoid. So please make sure to prepare the sauce in advance. Alright, the sauce is done, so please set it aside and let's move on to the next step. Next, let's prepare shredded cabbage for a side dish. So first, please cut the cabbage in half. And remove the core of the cabbage. Then separate the cabbage in half, since it's too tall to cut comfortably. Next, press the outer layer of the cabbage against the cutting board and make it flat. Then start cutting thinly. Please make sure to tuck your left hand fingers under the knuckles so you don't cut yourself. At this time, the side of my knife is always touching my knuckles, but I'm making sure the blade never goes up any higher than them. If the cross section gets wider and you don't feel comfortable cutting, you can rotate it halfway and continue cutting. Transfer all the cabbage slices to a bowl. Then cut the inner layers of the cabbage in the same way.
Just like before, if the cabbage is too tall to cut comfortably, you can always separate the layers and make it shorter. Remember, your safety is most important. Then after slicing, soak the cabbage in cold water for one minute. By doing this, you can crisp up the texture of the cabbage. But if you soak it for more than a minute, it will start to lose some of the vitamins. So one minute later, please drain the water. Finally, shake off any excess water and plate the shredded cabbage, leaving one side of the plate open. So this open space is where you will serve the ginger pork. Alright, that's it. The shredded cabbage is done. Next, let's cut the onion. So when slicing the onion, please cut it along the grain. By doing so, the onion will retain its crisp texture even after sautéing. The thickness of each slice is about 5 mm. And after slicing, please separate all the layers. This will help them cook faster in the pan. Right? The onion is done. Next, let's prepare the pork. The first thing we do is make small cuts on the sinews, which run between the fat and red meat. By making small cuts on the sinews, you can prevent the pork from curling up when grilling it. So after cutting the sinews, your pork will look like this. Please make the same cuts on the remaining pork slices. The next thing we do is coat the pork slices with potato starch. So please arrange these pork slices nicely on the cutting board. Then sprinkle a small amount of potato starch over the pork slices. And spread the potato starch using your hand. By coating the pork with potato starch lightly, it helps to keep moisture in the meat during grilling. As a result, the meat will stay tender even after cooking. It also helps to thicken the sauce, and the thickened sauce will adhere to the pork better. But be careful not to use too much potato starch, as it can make the sauce too thick. Please turn the pork slices over and do the same to the other side. And once you have finished coating the pork slices, please transfer them to a tray. And our pork loin is good to go. Okay, now that we have finished all the preparations, let's start cooking. Please get the large frying pan. I'll be using an 11 inch pan today. And please add a tablespoon of vegetable oil to the frying pan and turn on the heat to medium low. And once the frying pan has become hot and the oil has become runny like this, please add the onion to the pan. Then sprinkle a pinch of salt over them. The salt will help the onion cook faster and bring out the flavor of the onion. And we'll saute the onion slices until they become golden brown. Browning the onion slices will bring the best flavor out of them. The key here is not to touch the onions too much, in order to achieve a beautiful browning. 
So please flip the onions only once a minute. Okay, they look great. So once the onion slices have turned golden brown like this, please remove them from the pan and set them aside. Then please wipe off the moisture on the frying pan with a paper towel once. And add one tablespoon of vegetable oil again. Maintain the heat at medium low. Spread the oil and make sure the frying pan is heated well. And arrange the pork slices on the pan without overlapping them. So if you are preparing a similar amount of pork as I do, please cook the pork in two batches. Then we'll grill the bottom side of the pork for one minute. One minute later, please turn the pork over. And we'll cook the other side of the meat only for 30 seconds. It's very important not to overcook the meat at this stage, since we'll cook it fully when we add the sauce later. So exactly 30 seconds later, please take them out of the pan and set it aside. And we'll cook the remaining pork. So please put the remaining pork slices in the pan without overlapping and cook them for one minute just like the first batch. And one minute later, please flip them over. However, this time, as soon as you flip the pork slices, quickly return the cooked onion and the first batch of the pork slices to the pan. Then quickly give the sauce one final mix and add it to the pan. From this point on, all you have to do is flip the pork slices over and over and coat them with the delicious ginger sauce. While doing so, the sauce will gradually thicken and create a glossy and appetizing glaze on the pork and the onions. And about 2 minutes later, once the sauce has thickened to this much, it is ready. So turn off the heat and arrange the pork slices beautifully on the serving plate. In the end, put the onion slices on top of the pork and that's it. Your delicious ginger pork is ready. It becomes a complete meal with rice and miso soup. Alright, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. So if you did, please give me a like and leave a comment below. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and follow me on Twitter. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you soon in my next video. Bye bye.